My name is Loren and welcome to Faith Fellowship Aurora. Thank you for being with us today. We are so grateful to God that He has brought you to us today. We believe that God has something specific that He wants to say to you. So if this is your first time to join us, please do comment below where you are joining from or send us a message on Facebook so we can connect with you. Make it a great week, guys. Let us know how can we be praying for you. Send us a message on Facebook or you can call us on the numbers on the screen or visit our website, ffaurora.org, for more details on how to get connected. We are really excited about what God has to say through our senior pastor, Pastor An Young. But before that, would you take a minute to share this stream on your Facebook so that your family, your friends can join you watching today's service? Second, share any notes or highlights that God impresses on your heart. And be sure to check our discussion guide after the service so you can dig deeper into the Word of God yourself with your family, with your friends, and with your faith group. And now, let us prepare our hearts and worship God. Let us sing to the Lord. In 
indeed, if our God is for us, who can be against us? Let us sing this song and declare this with faith. We won't fear the battle, we won't fear the night. We will walk the valley with you by our side. You will go before us, you will lead the way. We have found a refuge only you can see. Sing with joy now, our God is for us. The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now, no love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for us? Even when I stumble, even when I fall, even when I turn back, still your love is sure. I will not abandon, you will not forsake. You will cheer me on, work with never ending grace. Sing with joy now, our God is for us. The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress Raise your voice now, no love is greater Who can stand against us if our God is for us? Yeah. Neither height nor death can separate against us if our God is for us. Sing with joy now, our God is for us. The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now, no love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for us? We were strangers, 
now we're called His own His grace has welcomed the sinner home Tender mercies lead us to the throne Hallelujah, what a Savior I owe everything to Him Hallelujah, what a Savior Hallelujah to my King Hallelujah Hallelujah to my King Hallelujah Hallelujah to my King Oh what peace The Spirit of Jesus brings Through the trials He will carry me One day in heaven Our eyes will meet Filled with wonder all the saints will sing Hallelujah, what a Savior I owe everything to Him Hallelujah, what a Savior Hallelujah to my King Sa sa pika. 
kang puso ko na makapiling ka Umaawi, sumasamba, sumasayaw sa'yo Naghihintay ng pangungusap mo Ayaw ko magkulang ng kapangyarihan mo Ayaw kong magkulang ng kabanalan mo Jesus, takila ka Tanging sandigan ko Lakas ko ay nanggagaling sa'yo Ayaw kong magkulang ng kapangyarihan mo Ayaw kong magkulang ng kabanalan mo Jesus, takila ka Tanging sandigan ko Lakas ko ay nanggagaling sa'yo Lakas ko ay nanggagaling sa'yo Lakas ko ay nanggagaling sa'yo Welcome to our online worship once again, and I'm Pastor Enyong. We welcome you to Faith Fellowship Aurora's online worship service. We are still at the topic of wisdom. This is our topic for this year, 2021. And previously, last week, we talked about the beginnings of wisdom. We learned that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Diyan po nag-uumpisa. Ang, pa, ang pagkakaroon ng karunungan at kaalaman sa Panginoong Diyos. But today, we are focusing on a similar and a related passage. We will find this in Proverbs 1 verse 7 which says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, while fools despise wisdom and instruction. So today, we'll be focusing on the opposite, which is the foolish, foolishness of uh, rejecting wisdom. Yan po ang focus natin for today. Now, if you remember, we defined wisdom as knowledge applied. To be wise is more than just knowing. To be wise is to be a person that puts into practice what he knows. And because wisdom is personified in Jesus himself, Wisdom, therefore, is the knowledge of Christ being seen in our lives. Wisdom, therefore, is Christ-likeness and all that is connected to being like Jesus Christ. That's what wisdom is all about. Now, the opposite of wisdom, as I said a while ago, is foolishness. So, um, a person who is considered unwise is also otherwise known as a fool. To be a fool, therefore, is more than just simply being ignorant or lacking in knowledge. To be a fool, sa Tagalog, ay pagiging hangal. Higit pa, sa, higit pa ito sa pagiging mangmang o kulang sa kaalaman. At tulad ng wisdom, hangal, Ang isang taong hindi nakikita sa kanya ang pagiging matuwid at makadiyos. But instead, what you see in a person is considered a fool is ungodliness in its many forms. Now, I say, I describe what fools look like. And you will find that in Isaiah chapter 32, verse 6. It says there, For the fool will speak folly and his heart will work iniquity to practice profaneness and to utter error against Yahweh, to make empty the soul of the hungry and to cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. According to Isaiah, wisdom is basic, or foolishness I mean, is expressed, expressed, it's in, expressed 
through our ungodly actions in life. Because wisdom is knowledge applied. A fool is someone who does not apply the godly knowledge in his heart and in his mind and it results to wickedness. So it, it begins in the heart and then uh, it comes out from our mouth and then it manifests through a variety of actions impacting others. As Isaiah chapter 32 uh, tells us. Now going back to the text, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. There is a foolishness associated to rejecting wisdom. Now, why do fools despise wisdom? Bakit nga ba ayaw ng mga fools ang wisdom? Let me just share to you two reasons why fools despise wisdom. The first reason is this. The fools despise wisdom because first and foremost, they don't believe in God. I say of, of Psalm 14 verse 1 and Psalm 53 verse 1 says, The fool had said in his heart, There is no God. Now, if you say this nowadays, kapag sinabi mo ngayon itong particular Psalm na ito, you will get into a lot of trouble. In a world that we live in that is very pluralistic, it is politically incorrect to declare this kind of statement, you take the risk of offending those who do not believe in God. Now, the Bible, however, is non-apologetic of its proclamations. Like when it comes to wisdom, the Bible has made it very specifically clear. Wisdom comes from God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Furthermore, the whole counsel of Scripture is clear in saying that this wisdom is embodied in Jesus Christ Himself. To be wise, according to the Bible, is to believe in Jesus Christ and to live out Christ-likeness. This is essential and foundational to have that godly wisdom that I am talking about. If we want to be a truly wise person, a person whose life re reflects godliness and righteousness that our God the Father desires for us, we must be Christ-like. We must have Jesus Christ in our lives first and foremost in order for us to manifest Christ-likeness in all that we do. Christ-likeness is wisdom, and embodied in a life that is righteous, just, wholesome, good, pure, helpful, and true. And so these are the things that um, wisdom uh, manifests in our life. Now, the second reason why fools despise wisdom is because of pride. Pride is the second reason why fools despise wisdom. Now, pride, according to Bob Hextra, is defined as this. It is a foolish, inaccurate assumption that we are adequate to produce a life on our own. Pride, therefore, is a high estimation of ourselves. When one is too proud, he or she would therefore not listen because he thinks highly of himself. Now, pride despises many things. In Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7, let me just say that again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. There are two things that a foolish person despises. Wisdom and instruction. Pride despises wisdom. What does this mean? Now, to despise wisdom is to fail to put into practice the godly things that a person knows either voluntarily or by cause of ignorance. Kapag hindi mo na isa sa buhay, ang bagay na alam mo, you are considered foolish. Now, we have already learned that wisdom in its most basic 
is knowledge of God applied in our life. Ito yung uh, hindi natin pag-apply sa buhay ng mga kaalaman, lalong-lalo na yung mga kaalaman natin sa Diyos. It is a mark of pride, therefore, for anyone to seek to know a lot, to gain a lot of knowledge, to know a lot of things, either spiritually or other matters, but remaining unchanged by them. To the Christian, this is what it means. This means hearing the word, but not being doers of the word. Did you get that? We can't be hearers, pasok sa isang tinga, labas sa kabila, but it doesn't do anything in our lives. The issue here is application. A story is told about a trainer, a coach, a life coach, a trainer. And this particular life coach and trainer helps conducts uh, trainings and coachings about how to be the best version of yourself. So this trainer talks about being, how to be disciplined, how to be excellent, how to be organized, how to best present yourself to others. And so he teaches about being excellent in all that we have to do. So he does all of that. He speaks very well and is very slick in his presentation and all. The problem, however, with this teacher is that he is always late for all of his commitments, his seminars, and his trainings would hardly ever start on time because of his tardiness. What do you get from that? Someone who does not practice what he teaches. Someone who knows a lot about how to be excellent but himself is found wanting because what he knows he is not applying. That is despising wisdom. So pride despises wisdom. The second thing that pride despises is instruction. Now, instruction has three categories. The, the biblical word for instruction can mean three things. It can mean plain instruction, it can mean correction, it can mean discipline. The biblical word for instruction actually has a very wide coverage and it covers all of these three things. And so let us look at the very first category of instruction that pride despises. Pride despises plain instruction. By plain instruction, I'm referring to teaching itself or the giving or the passing on of information or knowledge. Uh, fools despise plain instruction and they express it through a thought in their heart which expresses, I know that already or alam ko na yan. So they would not listen anymore because they assume they know it all. Now, this can happen to all of us. It happens to me when my boys talk to me and I would anticipate what they will be saying and I will, told them, I will tell them, stop, I know that already. But it also happens to me when I talk to my boys. Let I, let's say I will try to tell them to do something. My boys would respond to me, I know, I know, I know, Daddy, I know it already, even when I haven't even finished my statement yet. It happens when a person is sharing something that is different from your view or perspective. You sort of stop listening because he or she contradicts your views or what he is saying does not really interest you at all. It is when a teacher speaks. It is when a preacher gives a sermon. It is when a faith group leader facilitates a discussion but in your heart you are saying I know it all I know it already alam ko na yan so in your mind and in your heart you are actually not listening and then the second category of what the biblical word instruction means is correction fools despise being corrected now by being corrected it means being rebuked or it could also mean being given a warning now listen to me you can tell a lot about how proud a person is 
or how humble a person is when you correct them. Am I right? That is when you point out something wrong about them or something that needs improvement. Proud people, they do not necessarily like to be told that they are wrong. They are defensive or worse, they turn the tables on you. What I mean is they will start finding fault or something wrong about you. It is hard when our egos get hurt. And that is why people who are proud, they do not like to be corrected. But the one who openly receives inst a correction is wise for he knows he will become a better person for it. Now, the third category of instruction is discipline. Now, if you notice, instruction comes in three categories, also in three varying degrees. The lowest one is uh, the giving of information or plain instruction. The second one is being corrected or being rebuked. The third one is discipline. Discipline happens when a person refuses to be corrected. It is the highest or the most serious form of instruction by discipline. It means that the person concerned has not listened to the correction or the warning or the rebuke. Hindi nakinig sa pagtutuwid. The person therefore needs to undergo discipline para matuto. Fools who do not respond to correction or rebuke resent being disciplined or punished. Um, oftentimes, they are cognizant of their own failures, but they are unwilling to face the consequences of their own actions. And so, they do not submit to discipline. It is a testimony to a person's character when that person not only recognizes the error, the mistake, or the sin, but also accepts the consequences arising from such of which discipline is one. Proud people, however, do not. Fools despise wisdom and instruction, and pride despises these two things, wisdom and instruction. But there is a third thing or a third group that proud people despise. Pride despises others. When I say this, personal na. Fools think highly of themselves and lowly of others. But ka nga naman makikinig sa iba kung ganun ang tingin mo sa kanila, hindi ba? Hindi issue sa kanila yung alam ko na yan. But the issue is more Sino ka ba? Who are you? Mga magulang sa anak, pwedeng ang pagkasabi ay anak lang kita or sa boss, subordinate lang kita. And minsan, namamaliit natin yung mga ilan na walang credentials. How, this is about how we view others. It turns out to be a very hypocr hypocritical way of looking at others. We are placing ourselves higher and above them and that's what pride does ultimately fools despise other people because of their high view of themselves and when we have this pride in our hearts we will despise wisdom we will despise instruction and we will despise other people and when we do that napakarami ng posibleng consequences nito sa ating buhay so what are the consequences of foolishness. Foolishness can lead to three things. It can lead to discipline, it can lead to disgrace, it can lead to destruction. Let's talk about discipline first. Now, in speaking about fools or pride despising instruction, it begins with the, the giving of simple teaching and then correction and discipline. When a person refuses to believe one correction after another, the ultimate result is 
madidisiplina. Bilang magulang, alam natin yan. Yung kapag ulit-ulit natin pinagsasabihan as parents, when we continuously talk to our children and tell them not to do this or warn them about these things, when they continue to avoid our advice or not to follow what we are telling them, it will eventually result to some form of discipline. Proverbs 26 verse 3 says, A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the back of fools. And we must remember that eventually if we refuse to the instruction that be, uh, is being given un unto us, it may lead us to being disciplined. Pero may pag-asa ka pa rito. Because if you will respond possibly to, uh, positively to discipline, it may bring unto your life righteousness and correction indeed. Disgrace is the second result or the second consequence of discipline, of foolishness, I mean, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 35 says, The wise will inherit honor, but fools get disgrace. Kahiyan po. When we refuse to listen to the call of wisdom, when we are too proud to welcome instruction or to accept corrections, or to submit to discipline for our wrong in wrongful actions, we will eventually be disgraced. At marami na nating, marami ng pagkakataon na nakita natin yan sa mga tao na ayaw makinig because it has brought them to a life of disgrace. We see that in the life of many people that do not listen to what godly counsel is giving them. They refuse to listen the children, children that are refusing to listen to their parents and people ultimately who do not listen to the counsel of the word our God. It does bring disgrace. Destruction is the ultimate consequence of foolishness. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 32 says, The simple are killed by their turning away and the complacency of fools destroys them. You know, the Bible is also very clear. Pride goes before one's downfall or destruction. So we must understand that if we do not move away from being foolish, if we do not embrace the wisdom that comes from Jesus Christ, and if we have pride in our heart, that is having pride, despising wisdom and instruction and other people that surround us, foolishness in our lives will result to these three things. But there is always a way out of foolishness. There is a way to respond. And there are two ways when we could respond so that we can go back to God. Faith and humility. So that we can embrace the wisdom of God, we must have faith. Faith. A faith in Jesus Christ first and foremost. We have already learned that the beginning of wisdom is fear of God. And wisdom in the Bible is personified in Jesus Christ. Christ is the wisdom of God. And so we need to place our faith in Him. If the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, then we must learn to place our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, unto whom we must believe and trust unto Jesus must be received in our lives. And that is an act of faith. Humility is the second response that is very important. If, if pride despises wisdom and instruction, the opposite call is for us to respond in humility. Paul spoke about this when he wrote to the church in Philippi. He said, do not look unto only, no, do not look unto your own interest at alone, but also to the interest of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. So, so Paul 
was telling the Philippian church that you should have the mind of Christ, which is the mind of humility. And Jesus Christ was so humble that he was more than willing to empty himself. He took on the form of a servant and being born like us so that he could give to all of us that hope of salvation. Let me tell you, only a person with a humble heart is willing to receive instruction. Only a person with a humble heart is willing to receive correction. And only a person with a humble heart is willing to submit to discipline. Two things, faith in Jesus Christ and second, humility. How do we put this into practice? How do we put faith and humility into practice? When it comes to faith, this is what you need to do. Some of you probably have not yet placed your faith in Jesus Christ. In effect, you still have not yet embraced the wisdom that comes through Christ alone. And what is needed is for you to place your faith in Christ to receive him to those who receive him the Bible says they will become children of God and that is essential that is necessary for Jesus to be in your life what do I mean to respond in faith this is what it's like this prayer expresses this desire if you are watching this service for the first time and you have not yet placed your faith in Jesus Christ and you are aware that you do not have the wisdom from God in Jesus Christ, this is how you place your faith in Christ through a form of a prayer. This is what this prayer says. Dear God, I want to be a person of wisdom. I now know that I can only be truly wise if I believe in Jesus Christ, who is the wisdom of God. So today, I place my faith unto him i surrender to christ and i surrender any dependence on myself forgive me lord for my pride when i have thought i am wise in my own eyes so now as i have received christ i know i have also received the wisdom in my life amen does this prayer express the desire of your heart let me just go back to it again. Dear God, I want to be a person of wisdom. I now know that I can only be truly wise if I believe in Jesus Christ, who is the wisdom of God. So today, I place my faith unto Him. I surrender to Christ and I surrender any dependence on myself. Forgive me, Lord, for my pride when I had thought that I am wise in my eyes. So now, as I have received Christ, I know I have also received the wisdom in my life. Amen. If this is the first time that you have heard this prayer or read this prayer or made this prayer, can you please let us know? You could just uh, type in a message, send Faith Fellowship Aurora a private message and let, us, and let us know that you made this prayer. Just say, I prayed in faith in Jesus Christ so that we will also be able to pray with you send a message I prayed in faith in Jesus Christ now a prayer of humility looks something like this Christians from time to time need to surrender or recommit their lives to Jesus Christ sometimes when uh, we have strayed away, depended on our own wisdom or knowledge. We need to return back to God. And this is what this prayer looks like. Dear God, I have realized that though I have been following you, I have at times continued to rely on my own wisdom. Forgive me of my pride and I just surrender myself anew to you, O Jesus. Help me. To always trust in you and not on my own understanding thank you for your forgiveness and grace make me a person of wisdom through Jesus Christ 
Amen. You may have been a long-standing Christian and you know that you are not living wisely in the name of our God. Does this prayer express that desire? My hope is that whether you are new in this service and you have not, heard, not have yet have heard about Jesus Christ, my prayer is that you will place your faith in Him. But you may well have been a Christian for a while and yet you know in your heart that you are making poor, foolish choices. My desire is that you will recommit your life to the Lord and make this prayer of surrender or recommitment because that's how we shall gain that wisdom that God wants for us to have that is only possible through Jesus Christ. Well, God bless you. May you have a wisdom-filled week. Thank you for joining us today. We are so grateful that we can worship together even as we are separated by distance. Church, today we have the opportunity to still be a part of supporting our church ministries. Do check our Facebook account or our website, ffaurora.org, for more details on how to give. Thank you for your faithfulness. For our announcement, please take note of the following schedule. Calling all kids ages 4 through 13. We would love to see you at Faith Kids each week every after 10 a.m. Sunday service. Please do comment Faith Kids below for registration and we will be in touch with you. Deadline every Friday each week. You can also join our prayer room every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Please comment prayer room and we will be in touch with you. As we live today, we pray Ephesians chapter 3 verses 20 to 21 over you today and this week. Let us pray. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen.